your exam takes all the the study units from study unit one until study unit 11. So when you prepare for the exam, you must know that you're doing for everything, even though your assignment only ended at study unit 10. If you look at your, your textbooks, those who are using textbooks, your textbook has chapters. You will notice that you do not do chapter 10, which is ANOVA. So please don't go through that chapter. It's not part of your scope. So you do chapter nine and then you skip and go do chapter 11 and then do chapter 12, which today is chapter 11. And I call it session, session 11. It's just that we are on session 11. It doesn't have anything to do with chapters of your, your books. So yeah, but this is study unit 10, which is chapter 11 on your book. Uh, and you also, also I need to mention this, you only do chi-square for independence. Do not do other sections. Do not do chi-square for goodness fit test. You don't do those. Only do chi-square for independence. That's what we're covering for today only. Okay, with that said, Let's look at what we're going to be covering today. Since I said we're going to do chi-square, we're going to do a little, um, little bit of the basic concepts in the beginning so that you get used to what are the terminologies we use, how we get find the critical value, how we calculate the test statistic and all that. Then we're going to do a hypothesis testing exercise where we dedicate 30 minutes to doing that also following the same method that we applied previously with the basic concepts. Then we'll take a break, come back, we do lots and lots of exercises. Uh, some of the exercises come from your tutorial letter. So I expect you to at least try and do those exercises and give feedback because I cannot be doing your assignment for you. You need to be doing it yourselves. So when we do the exercise, I expect you to take part and take the initiative to answer those assignment questions. Do not expect me to give you the answers, but I expect you to do the, like the activity together. That's one. Okay, so enough with that. Let's move on and do chi-square. Like I mentioned previously that we, oh, when we started the session that some of the concepts are going to be, we, we're going to continue with those concepts, even though we're introducing a new topic. So we're still going to be doing hypothesis testing. You know, with hypothesis testing, there are six steps that we follow. We, we state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. We, <coughs> we uh, state what we are given in terms of alpha, and other values. We also state, uh, oh, what kind of a test are we doing? So because we're doing chi-square, the test that we're going to be doing a chi-square test, then we're going to also uh, do the critical value, find the critical value. So now, since we're doing a chi-square test, we're going to go to the chi-square test, uh, test statistic, or the chi-square critical value table. Um, at the back of your table, you will find the table named chi-square test or critical values of chi-square. Then uh, we're going to calculate the test statistic and I will show you the formula to calculate the test statistic. Um, and then we going to use the critical value to make the decision. So it means once we find the critical value, we are able to determine the region of rejection. So with chi-square, there's only one region of rejection. So we're always going to find the critical value using alpha and the degrees of freedom. So it means once we define where our critical value is and we determine our region of rejection, then we can make a decision based on the test statistic and the critical value to say, where are we making a decision? Are we rejecting or are we not rejecting the null hypothesis? And those are fairly the basic, the basic steps that you need to always remember when we do hypothesis testing. So one, 
we introducing a new table and the new test statistic. So you just need to know all those. So by the end of this session, you should learn how and when to use the chi-square test for independence and be able to use a contingency table to answer the questions for your chi-square table. What do I mean by a contingency table? A contingency table is just a table with rows and columns. We look at this. This is the result of a contingency table that um, organizes the sample size of 300 in terms of female or males and female, or what we call gender and hand preference. So on the row, we have gender, with gender broken down by may, uh, female and male, and the hand preference goes in the column where it's broken down by left and right hand side. So we use the contingency table when we did the probabilities. Remember that? And we said, if in the exam as well, they do not give you the total on the contingency table, you can actually go and calculate the total on your contingency table. So you just quickly calculate those total because you will require those total. So you calculate the total and you calculate your N, which is your sample space in this instance is equals to your N. And we're going to always use your N to calculate some of the things that we need to be calculated, especially the expected values. Okay, so how do we then use this contingency table? And remember, the chi square for independence tells us the relationship between two categorical values because we have two categorical values, gender and hand preference. So to test for independence, we are actually testing the relationship between the cate two categorical data, which one will be placed in the row and one will be placed in the column. And when we state the null hypothesis to test this, we always state the null hypothesis with an, with an independent. So in the null hypothesis, it will always state that the two categorical variables are independent, or it will state that hand and gender preference are independent, which means there is no relationship between the two of them. But you never state the, the hypothesis by using there is no relationship. We always say are independent. The alternative will say the opposite of that. It will state that two categorical variables are dependent, which means there is a relationship between the two variables. And that's how we state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Then with the test, we also need to calculate the test statistic at some point and our chi squared test statistics is given by the sum of your observed frequencies minus your expected frequencies squared divided by your expected frequencies. What do I mean by observed frequencies? So those are your observed frequencies. The 12, the 108, the 24, and 156 are what we call the observed frequencies. Then we need to calculate the expected frequencies and that's what we're going to learn how to calculate just now. So it means for all those values, the observed frequencies, we're going to subtract it from the expected frequencies, which we will calculate using the observed, um, uh, the, uh, the total of the observed uh, frequencies. <coughs> and so when we go find the critical value, because we will need to use the critical value to make our or to determine where our region of rejection will be. Therefore, our critical value, we find it by using the degrees of freedom of the number of rows minus one times the column of um, the number of columns minus one. And that gives us the degrees of freedom. So if I go back to this, how many number of rows? We have two rows. And we have two columns. So it will say 
two minus one. So because it's row minus one, it's number of rows. There are two rows times the number of columns minus one. There are two columns. So it will be two minus one times two minus one in this instance. And that will give us a degree of freedom of one. And we're going to use as well our value of alpha to go find the critical value. And I will show you just now how to find that. To calculate the expected frequencies, then we use the following. Remember, we had a contingency table which has the number of rows and the number of columns. And we have the total. And we have the total there. So to calculate the expected frequency, we use the total. So to calculate the expected frequencies there, we use the column total or the let's say the row total, which is that one, which is the row, the row total times the column total divide by our n. So we're going to take that value times that value divide by that. It will give us the expected value for this one, for that column. If we want to calculate for this one, I'm going to call it X. We're going to take the row X and the column X and divide by N, and that will give us the expected frequencies. When we make a decision, then we say if our test statistics, so we go, remember for chi square, we only have one region of rejection and that it's only on this side. So it will be our chi square test alpha and the degrees of freedom. And that is where our region of rejection will be. Anything that falls in this side, we reject the null hypothesis. And that's all what that says. If our test statistic that we calculated, this test statistic, once we've calculated it and we go find our critical value, which is that critical value that we will find on the table, then we're going to say, if the test statistic fall inside the rejection area, we reject the null hypothesis. If it falls in here, we do not reject the null hypothesis. Then how do we even find this critical value? Finding the critical value, let's say we're using the same um, table that we use the left hand side and the right hand side. We know that it was 2 minus 1 and 2 minus 1. Therefore, our degrees of freedom for this will be 1 times 1 is 1. So our chi square test of 0 0,05, let's say it was at 95% confidence interval or alpha is equals to 0 0,05. So we say, our alpha of 0 0.05 and the degrees of freedom of 1. Go to the table. Uh, I should have shared my... I need to share the... Okay, so we go to the critical values of chi. Uh, this is critical values of T, and there is your critical values of chi table. And you will see that also on the critical values of chi, it also uh, it shows you where your region of rejection will be. So remember now, we're looking for chi, chi square of 0 0.05. Therefore, it means also with this table, we ignore those cumulative pr probabilities at the top. We're only interested in the upper tail area. And we look for the degrees of freedom of one. So our degrees of freedom will be at the bottom. So we come here, we look for 0 0.05. 0 0.05, this is the value. And we look for degrees of freedom of one, where they meet, which is our critical value for this will be three comma. 
and that is our critical value. That is our critical value, and that's how we're going to find our critical value. Okay, any question? No questions? So if there are no questions, let's look at an example. When you do chi-square test, actually, it is very time consuming, especially if they give you a table with so many number of rows and so many um, number of columns, it's time consuming to do chi-square testing. So you need to pace yourself when you come to this question because it will be one of those questions right at the end of your exam. So let's look at an example. As you can look at this table, it's very big. It's got four, uh, categories in terms of plus standing, so it has four data values, and it also have three uh, data values in terms of number of meals per week. So we have the meals per week selected by 200 students shown below. So the students are broken down by plus standing, so which means the type of students. So this is an American term, which refers to freshmen, so five, junior and senior, depending. So freshmen will be the first year students. So five will be those who are moving from first year to second year. And then junior will be those who are in their second year to third year. And the seniors will be those who are doing postgraduate studies, probably like your honors and masters and PhDs and so forth. So if this is the list of students who selected the, the meal plan, so we want to test if the class standing has any, or is class standing independent from the number of meals per week? We state the null hypothesis. Meal plan and class standing are independent. The alternative will say the meal plan and class standing are dependent. So once we've stated the null hypothesis, then we can determine the next thing. What else are we given? So for example, let's say they gave us the alpha of 0 0.05. Yay. And the other thing, because with this, we need to be calculating the expected value. It's very important to do that before you do your, your, your chi-square test have to calculate the expected frequencies. Remember, the observed frequencies, we have 24, 32, 14, and, 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 and we calculated the total. We know that there are 200 students interviewed. Now we need to calculate the expected frequency. We know what the expected frequency is. So at this point, I'm calculating the expected frequency for this column. It says, row total multiplied by column total divided by N, our row total, so we come to, to this column. Our row total is 30. Our column total is 70. So it will be 30 multiplied by 70 divided by 200. And that gives us 10.5. And that will be that. So for 24, let's say we go back to the top. Let's say we want to calculate for this one. To calculate. The expected value for 24, we say row total is 70, multiply by column total is 70, divide by our sample space, which is 200. And when you do 70 times 70, divide by 200, you will get 24.5. To calculate for 32, same. We say row total is 70, Multiply by column total of 88, divide by 200, it will give us 30.8. To calculate for 14, we say row total is 70, multiply by column total of 42, divide by 200, and we get 14 points. And you do for the rest of the table. So you don't have to complete that part. But when you add all of them, they should give you as well equals to the same, like 70, 60, 30, 40. But you don't have to do the totals. 
So you just need to calculate the expected, only the orange part, the expected values. So now once you have the expected value, then we can go calculate the test statistic or we can go find the critical value first, whichever one. So in this instance, I'm, I'm calculating the test statistic. So the test statistic, we know that it's your observed minus your expected squared divided by your expected. So if going back to the, we know what our observed are. So what we're going to do with this is, we look at our observed, remember, is the summation of your observed minus your expected squared divided by expected. What it means is for every observed, we need to go subtract it from their corresponding expected and square the value and divide by that, and then go and, and add the next one. So we'll take the observed minus expected, divide by expected, squared the top one, plus observed minus expected, squared, divide by expected for every one of them. So for 24, we will say 24. So that will be 24 minus 24.5, 24.5, and you square the answer, divide by 24.5. Then you go to 32. 32 will be 32 minus 30 plus 32 minus 30.8. And then you take the square of that divide by 30.8, 30.8. Then you continue until you do all of them. And that's what your chi-square test statistics looks like. Then you do for all of them and add them. Once you solve all this part, you get zero comma. You get zero comma seven zero nine. And then to get to the chi-square test, remember we need to go and count our degrees of freedom. So we have one, two, three, four columns and one, two, three rows. So we know that it is the number of rows minus one. We have four rows times the number of columns minus one. We have three columns. So four minus one is three. Three minus one is two. So three times two is equals to six. So to go find chi square zero comma zero five and six. And when you go to the table, you will go and find 0, 0,05 at the top, and you will go degrees of freedom six year where they meet there. You will find that value is 12.592. So now, once we have the chi squared test, we are able we are able to create the region of rejection because now we know that our test statistic is 0, 0,709 and our critical value is 12.592. So where the 0, 0,074 is false in the do not reject area and you are able to make that decision. And that's all what you do. So once you have determined your critical value, which tells you your region of rejection, you also find your test statistic and you find where that falls. And we can conclude by saying, since our test statistic of 0, 0,09 is less than our critical value of 0, of, as critical value with alpha 0, 0,05 of 12,59, so we do not reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is not sufficient evidence that the meal plan and the class pending are related. And that's how we make the decision. Any question? Okay, absence to questions. Let's look at more examples. 
So here I will request you to also uh, participate and take action and assist me to complete the, the example because we've gone through one example. So now we're going to do the other example together as a group. But I will give you time to also do the activity and then we come back and we do step by step. So we will do it step by step together. Okay, so I took this from one of the past exam question paper. So I removed the answers because I want us to do this as if like we don't know the options given to us. So we're going to do six steps of hypothesis testing for chi-square. So a study on the mode of transport that workers use to commute to work and the associated distance covered by each mode of transport is summarized in the table below. Yeah, it shows the distance between 0 and 10 kilometers and 10 kilometer and 50 and the mode of transport by car, bus or train. And they calculated already the total, so we don't even have to worry about that because they did that for us. The question we need to answer is, is mode of transport and distance covered independent? Test this hypothesis at 5% level of significance. What will be your hypothesis testing? So number one, think about it for two minutes. What will be your hypothesis testing and your null hypothesis? So here we need to state our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis testing. So one minute, think about it. Okay, so anyone, how do we state the null hypothesis and the alternative? Is my mic broken? My mic is not broken. Guys. Anyone, 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 take a step. So nobody wants to try. Yes, Oscar, you can try. You can unmute and Am I am I am I audible? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, yes. Uh, I do want to try, but um, I'm I'm a, I'm a bit no. No, it's I'm fine. You know, learning is this is the process of learning. Whether you say it right or wrong, at least you will know next time. Um, how do you state your null hypothesis? I'm, 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 I'm still lost. I was busy trying to do uh, that uh, the, the activity that you shown us before. Then, uh, but I, I don't even get it right. How do you state the null hypothesis for that question? 
We have mode of transport. Okay. And we have distance covered. Okay. I will state the null hypothesis. Uh, they are dependent. Your null hypothesis will say? They are dependent. In your null hypothesis, it should always say? Oh, the class. Okay. Yeah, the class standing are, are dependent. So you will say mode of transport and distance covered are independent. That will be your null hypothesis. Okay. So, mode transport, just going to say trans and distance are in the independent. The alternative will say the opposite. Mode of transport and plus R are dependent. Are dependent. That is fine. Number two, we need to state what we are given. So we are told that we need to do alpha at zero comma. 0, 0.5. We can also find the degrees of freedom as well from here. Our degrees of freedom will be <coughs> our row total minus 1 or number of rows minus 1 times number of columns minus 1. So how many number of how many number of rows do we have? These are rows and these are columns. So this side is columns and this side we call them rows. How many number of rows do we have? Two. So we have two rows. So it will be two minus one. And number of columns we have? Three, Three. columns. 3 minus 1. So 2 minus 1 is one. equal to 1. Mm -hmm. And th 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. two. So two, 2 times 1 is 2. The next part, we need to calculate the expected values. That's all what we need to be calculating. So I'm going to Calculate the first one and I will expect you to do all of them and then I'm giving you five minutes to complete to do all of them and then we go in um, I will ask you for the answers for the rest of them. So to calculate the expected value for bus and zero kilometers, remember we take the row total times the column total. So we're going to say the expected value for for bus and 0 to 10 is given by our row total multiplied by column total divided by n. So um, what is our row total? It's 53 multiplied by a column total of 45 divided by our sample size of 150. That gives us 53 times 45 equals divide by 150 equals 15.9. So I'm going to give you five more minutes. Um, please calculate for the car, for the train, and for the 10 and 50. So 
let's say I want to calculate for car. Remember, car is 32, is there. So therefore, my row total will be 53. Multiply by my column total of 49. Divide by 150. You're always going to divide by 150. And that will give us 53 multiply by 49 equals divide by 150 would give us 17.3. So continue and complete the whole table. I'll give you time to complete the whole table. Are we done? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, what is the total for for three for fifty three? I'm oh, sorry, for eleven. Nineteen point eight. Or oh, eleven nineteen point eight. Because we say fifty three times fifty six. Divide by, Divide by 150. Okay, others? Uh, for 35, how do we calculate the expected value for 35? 97 multiplied by 45 divided by 150. And then I got 29.1. You get 29.1. The next one for 70. 97, 97 multiplied by 49 divided by 150. The answer is 31.7. The answer is 31.7. And the last one, which is 45. 97 multiplied by 56 divided by 150. The answer is 36.2. 6.2. So now we have what we are supposed to be given and calculated as well. So we move to step number three, which is step number three. State your test that you are doing. So since this is chi-square, the test will also be chi-square state, which is chi-square's test statistic. 
And step number four, find the critical value. Finding the critical value, we say chi square, alpha, and degrees of freedom. And we know that our alpha, our alpha at 5% is 0, 0,05. And our degrees of freedom, we calculated it, it's two. So go find the critical value on the table and come back and tell me. So you must go to the critical values of chi or critical values of chi square and go find our 0, 0,05 in the upper tail area. And then go find degrees of freedom two on the side and where they both meet, you must tell me what do you see. Five point nine nine one. The critical value is five point nine nine one. I hope everybody is following and not only one person in class because if you get lost now, you won't be able to do your other assi assignments. And if I don't get participation of all the six of you, then it means I am not going to do your assignment question as exercises in class. I'm going to skip those and go to the other assessment because I do not want to do your assignment for you. So you need to show initiative when we are doing this so that you show me that you are really learning what I am telling you to do. So if you're not learning the skills that I'm giving you now, you need I need to understand that so that I don't do your assignment because I'm not doing justice for you. OK, so I, I expect all six of you to participate. I do not want to hear from one voice in the whole class. I expect to hear from everybody because there are several steps, so it cannot be that one person is doing all the steps for you. OK, so number five. We need to calculate the test statistic. So here I expect everybody to work as well. So step number five, we're going to calculate our chi-squared test, which is the sum of your observed value minus your expected value squared divided by your expected value. So here we're going to say, I'm going to complete only one part. You're going to complete the rest and do all the calculations. So I'm going to say our expected value is 10 minus, oh sorry, our observed value is 10 minus our expected of 15.9. Where the answer, divide that by 15.9 plus. Do the same with 32. It will be 32 minus our expected value, which is 17.3. And you square the answer and divide that by 17.3. Plus, you continue 11 minus our expected value for 11 was 19.8. Squared divide by 19.8 plus you continue. You do the same for 35, which is plus 35 minus 29.1 squared divide by 29.1. So I expect you to complete the whole the whole table. And when you're done, you can start answering the, the question. I'm giving you five more minutes to do the answer. And when you are done, please tell me that you are done.
I'm done. Okay, are we done? Yes, ma'am.
Okay, others, are you done? Other people, are you busy or you done? Still busy. Okay. How far? Okay, I'm done. Okay. So since you all done, I expect that the others are also done because they are silent. Uh, can we have the I'm going to do answer by answer by answer, and then we add all of them up. I hope you wrote it that way. Um, and if you didn't do it that way, I don't know how you did it. But those who wrote it answer by answer, can you give me the answer for number one? For 10 minus 15.9, what? what do you get? 2.2. .2. Uh, let's keep it to three decimals. Let's keep it to three decimals so that we don't round off quickly. Let's okay. say it's two point uh, I'm going to keep them to three decimal. Or we can keep it to two decimal because I don't know how others have kept theirs. Let's do it that way so that since the others don't talk to me, others, uh, 32 minus 17.3, what do we get? I got 12.47. Okay, let's keep it to, two, to one decimal. So it will be to 12.5. 12 because you say 47 net. And then the next one. 3.9. minus 19, you get. 3.9. 3.9. 35 29.1, what do you get? Square divided by 29.1. 1.2. 1.2 and 17 minus 31.7 squared divided by 31.7. What do you get? 6.8. 6.8. 1. And 45. 
minus 36.2 squared divide by 36.2. What do you get? 2.1. 2.1. Plus 2.1. And add them all together. What do you get as the answer? 28.7. 20? 28.7. 28.7. Yes. You get 28.7. So if number six is to make a decision and conclude. So if we draw the critical value of 5.991 will be there and this site will be the rejection area. So our 28.7 Seven falls in the rejection rejection. Area. Rejection. We make the null hypothesis and conclude that there is no sufficient evidence that the mode transport are independent. Or they are sorry, they are dependent. And that's how you do the chi-square test. Um, 